can be an emotional process, but boy, does it feel good when you do. Megan Arthurs is here with her tips. Hey, Megan. Hey, Mary. How are you? I'm great. So nice to see you. It's always such a pleasure to see you. I feel like every time you're here, I come home with so many ideas. I love that. And That's I the do influence. Them. It's the thing. It's amazing. <laughs> so, Megan, why do we find it so hard to declutter and let go of stuff? Yes, it is quite a challenge for numerous reasons. Mm -hmm. So we feel a lot of sentimental and emotional attachment to our belongings. There's a lot of fear base around mm -hmm. it too. We feel fearful if we let something go. What if we need it in the future? Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited for this topic today. We're gonna chat about six items that I see as the most clutter-filled items in my client homes. Okay, see, this is interesting. <laughs> well, we pulled our audience in advance to see if they hang on to the same kinds of things mm -hmm. and what they think is the most held on to items. Yes. Okay, so where are we starting? Okay, so the number one item is paper. Oh, mm, guilty. And mm -hmm. <laughs> guilty. <Yeah. laughs> 32 percent of our audience gets this as the number one most cluttered item. So we hang on to paper for a number of reasons. Sentimental reasons, mm -hmm. information reasons. We feel if we let it go of a piece of paper that has important information information on it, uh-oh, what do we do? Yeah. And then habit, right? So speaking of habit, it's so important that we get into a paper system habit. Where does the paper go? Mm. We don't want what we call the pile, I right? Have, we all have the pile. <laughs> the pile. <laughs> so yeah. here we have three letter trays that are stackable with important categories labeled on each. So items to file away, mm -hmm. items that are tasks we have to complete, pay a bill, fill out a form, and then items that are leaving the house maybe a, a school form, maybe it's a letter, mail that you're, you're sending off, mm -hmm. and then memory box. We want to try and create memory boxes in our home. We need a designated drop zone for the cards that come in, yes. for the artwork from our children. And I'm a micro organizer. This is why I like you. This is like 100% of my speed. I'm extreme, but I know you're here for yeah. it. So Ziploc baggies labeled with different cards that are coming in. Yeah. So we have from kids, from family, and then of course, blank cards. We all got blank cards lying around. And it's only handy if we know where they are. Are. Yes, I always find them when I don't need them, and I'm like, I'll remember, and then I end up having to go and buy birthday cards every single time. Yes. So you're gonna go home tonight and sort out your blank cards. 100%, <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Now, the second most cluttered item, or the next item is? Yes, we have mugs and shot glasses, and 21% of our audience guess this as the second most cluttered item. Mm -hmm. So mugs and shot glasses represent travel, mm -hmm. memories, and even more so now, identity. Yeah. personality, career, you know, number one teacher or like best grandma in the world, which is why it's hard for people to let go because it pulls on the emotional heartstrings, mm -hmm. right? And I always say to my clients, you know, when you're letting go of something that might represent who you are, you're not letting go of yourself and your identity, you're just letting go of an item. Yeah. Practicality first, what actually fits in your space really deserves prime real estate. Mm -hmm. Next, let go of the ones that you really don't use, and then you're gonna be left with a pile of ones you don't use, but you love, yeah. <laughs> and that's the hard decision. So maybe they'll go on a top shelf, maybe you let them go. Mm -hmm. It's really personal preference. That's tricky. Honestly, I have one shot glass and I, I don't use. I'm not a shot, I'm not a shot girl. <laughs> yeah. Wine only. Yeah, yeah wine, wine is a thing, yeah. Um, this is fantastic. I love that kind of narrowing down what you actually do use. Yes, exactly. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. All right, the next item. Okay. I am guilty of this one too. Electronics. Mm -hmm. So 11% of our audience gets this as our third most cluttered item. This is what most homes look like. There's a mishmash of cords that are tangled up in a bin or a basket. We hold on to electronics from a fear place because we think we're gonna lose data. Mm -hmm. Things might not be compatible in the future. And that's a real fear. Yeah. What if you lose photos? Yeah, <laughs> I totally understand. But you really wanna go through and try and identify what's what and ask yourself, when's the last time you went looking? for those items. Yes. It's a scavenger hunt. Chances are you're not going there very often, no. right? And your life is functioning fine without. So organizing your electronics is also very, very, very critical. Mm -hmm. So we have a three drawer system for USBs, cords and cables, and chargers. And of course, you know, I am 
very, very into the Velcro ties. Oh, my, my husband and I, you would, would get along. He yeah. loves those things. A no tangle mm -hmm. cord is a cord that's happy mm -hmm. with a little label that says what it is. I'm not the most tech savvy person, so I need to know what this cord is for. You are a wizard with a label maker though, <laughs> so that's pretty good. I'm passionate about labels. Yeah. It's great, you, you avoid the um, basket of spaghetti. You got it. Yeah, yeah. and you gotta keep everything nice yes. and organized. Yes, not here for spaghetti. No, we're over here for spaghetti. Okay. Which Speaking of which, shall we head to the kitchen? Let's go to the okay, kitchen. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. I love that. I and love hey, the drawers. I need to get drawers yes, now. Yes, drawers are so handy. Yeah. So the next one we're talking about. So kids' toys, but more specifically, toys that your children have outgrown. Mm -hmm. Now our audience was polled, and of course, 12% guess this is correct. Mm -hmm. So kids' toys, we hang on to them for nostalgic reasons, for sentimental reasons. And sometimes we also hang on to them because we think this is gonna be great for the next generation. Yep. We wanna pass it on to people who are expecting. I think there's nothing wrong with having storage bins, minimal, for keepsakes. However, if it's compromising your space yeah. and it's taking over your space and you're not able to enjoy your space, that's when we, you know, can reevaluate the items that we're holding on to. Mm -hmm. Maybe you take photos of them and create a photo book or a memory book. Totally. And I think, I mean, from when I was a kid, I had like my two favorites. Yes. Held on to those. And the rest, I think it's nice to pass on for another kid to love. 100%. Yeah. I love donating. I think it's so important mm. and someone else can enjoy it. That's fantastic. Also, I would like to play with this though. <laughs> this would never <laughs> leave my house. Yeah. All right. Now, I, again, another one I'm guilty of, Ooh, Megan. This mm -hmm. is going to be a triggering one for yeah. you. <laughs> jars on jars. So 12% of our audience guess this is our fifth most collected item. And we tend to really hang on to the jars, really for big hopes and dreams. I hear a lot that people want to make sauce and, and jams. And does this sound familiar? This uh, <laughs> sounds like you're reading my book. <laughs> you know what? We have to be realistic with ourselves. Mm -hmm. If you're going to make preserves this fall, awesome. Hang on to your jars. If it's not something for you, maybe you repurpose them. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you? utensils, stationary items were great in jars. Making a craft center for your children or grandchildren is so fun too. So there's other uses for jars as well. That's fantastic. And uh, now, yeah, Erin, I can keep all my jars. There I'm we just go. gonna put spoons in them. <laughs> we're good to go. Blame me. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, the final one, and this I know is a big one, I feel like. Yes. Yes, makeup. Makeup, cosmetics. 11% mm -hmm. of our audience guess this is the sixth and final most cluttered item. Cosmetics are challenging. We hang on because we spent a lot of money on them. Mm -hmm. We might like the packaging. We got influenced mm -hmm. on social media by someone for uh, purchasing the cosmetics. So, of course, you want to do a big purge. You want to be mindful about expiry dates. So, you'll see that on the back, back mm -hmm. of your cosmetics, there's a little jar with a number inside and the number represents how many months the item is good for once it's open. Mm -hmm. So if it's expired, I know. I feel like we just opened some people's I eyes know, here. Today. I know, yeah. yeah. well, <laughs> You might want to give it a toss, right? Being mindful what you're putting on your face, of mm -hmm. course organizing your product. We tend to keep cosmetics in a vanity bathroom drawer. It's a tricky space to organize. Stackable clear drawers are great for that. And then finally, being mindful of what you bring into your space, right? Being mindful about the habits that you have, saying no to samples maybe. It's a huge source of clutter. I love samples though. Samples can be good for traveling, but yeah. sometimes if we already have the item at home and we don't need it, a simple no thank you mm -hmm. can give your space a big hug. I feel like I turn into like a little, like a kid and I'm like, but it's so little. You're like, oh, it's yeah. cute. Yeah. <laughs> Christmas. Yeah, Megan, mm -hmm. this is fantastic. And I love the drawer because then you can access everything too. Absolutely, mm -hmm. 100%. Don't get things with lids on them. Drawers are ideal. Fantastic. Megan, as per usual, you've changed my house. Oh, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Thanks you so, so much. Hey, Mary here. What did you think? Drop your comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more of the good stuff.